Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 19th lecture of the course on sociological perspectives on modernity. In the last lecture, we have discussed Immanuel Wallerstein's reflections on synthesizing modernity and social theory and then we have discussed the distinctions between modernity on the one hand and postmodernism on the other. And such distinctions between modernism and postmodernism, I mean such distinctions between modernity and postmodernism have significant implications for the ways in which Anthony Giddens and Jürgen Habermas have, have tried to reflect on critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Uh, when I when we look at let us first start with Giddens then we will move on to uh, Habermas. These I mean these themes, these, these distinctions between modernity and, and postmodernism, I mean the, the kind of themes that we have already discussed in the last lecture. Okay. These themes are illustrated through discussions of various kinds of social forces, micropolitics and so on. Although there is still a curiously abstract level to the distinct, uh, discussion, especially about active or reflexive selves, because for modernists, <coughs> because for modernists the self is active and reflexive, but for postmodernists the, the the self is dissolved and dismembered. Okay, the implications for sociology are drawn in such a manner. I mean, sociology is is part of the reflexivity of modernity, but it needs to be reformed to take into account the time space manipulations, time space distanciations and dimensions of late modernity. Okay. For example, we need to look beyond the nascent state as a model of uh, society, I mean processes of differentiation, nascent state why I say uh, that it is a model of society. because precisely because um, such nascent states were also conceptualized against the backdrop of uh, the process of decolonization, okay? anti-colonial movements, anti-imperialist movements. Processes of differentiation that have been identified by earlier theorists need to be replaced with concepts of embedding and disembedding which would widen into account uh, of the whole subsequent dialectic operating between risk and trust, faceless and face to face commitments. Okay. In this context, Giddens is extremely important. Giddens notion of the problem of order, what is the problem of order? The, the problem of order is also the problem of modernity, the constituents of modernity. It is the problem of order is one of the constituents of modernity. The problem of order for Giddens is one of time space distanciation. In that time and space are ordered in, ordered in modernity to connect presence and absence. Secondly, these time space separations or distanciations produce uh, disembedding of traditional forms of relationships, dismembering of traditional forms of relationships as standard and abstract dimensions of space and time come to uh, as, as standard and abstract uh, uh, dimensions of space and time come to order and rationalize activities in the place of local contexts. <coughs> Examples include the use of a timetable to coordinate it, to, to coordinate going on a journey by car or plane. Such organizations also clearly involve 
reflexive accounts of past activities and disembedding both lifts out social relations from local contexts of interaction and restructures them across indefinite spans of time and space. And this is a better way of describing what has happened compared to concepts of social differentiation which are evolutionist in nature. Suppose we have, we have discussed um, in the context of uh, uh, Weber for example. Okay. Selection is based on cultural relevance, but if our cultural artifacts will change our selection processes will also undergo transformation. Thirdly, such disembedding mechanisms require the creation of symbolic tokens require certain representations through what especially through wealth through money defined as mechanisms to control time and space. <coughs> they also I mean such dis disembedding mechanisms also lead to the establishment of expert systems and this these disembed further because they provide um, abstract guarantees of expectations across uh, time and space and uh, what, uh, what do I mean by this? I mean these impersonal tests and public forms further, uh, further stretch social systems. They also imply a different kind of trust. Then what is trust? For, for Giddens, trust is defined fairly extensively to, to summarize it trust arises from the lack of full information, absolute information, lack of absolute information. Trust connotes reliability in the face of contingency. Trust operates as a link between faith and confidence. Trust involves principles rather than uh, relying on the morality of others. Trust develops confidence in the reliability of a person or system. Trust takes on a more calculative form in modernity. Everyday life is more reflexive for students, so that many people already know something of more specialist areas such as official statistics on divorce for example, population um, for example and, and it would not be at all unusual to find a, uh, uh, um, uh, a coroner uh, who had read Durkheim. I mean organic solidarity, mechanical solidarity. What is solidarity for, for Durkheim, Emil Durkheim? Solidarity means assemblies of people in the performance of rituals that is solidarity okay. and, and, and if I say assemblage of people in the performance of rituals refers to solidarity then everyday life becomes both sociologized as well as psychologized. Okay. Therein lies the significance of, of the term uh, difference that we have discussed in the last lecture when, when uh, I mean difference by, by Derrida, not difference but difference okay. that that is a French term coined by Derrida. Uh, I mean that is a central concept in Derrida's deconstruction uh, that is a critical outlook concerned with the relationship between text and meaning our everyday life becomes sociologized as well as psychologized okay <coughs> that the relationship between between text and meaning okay that's how difference also uh, refers to conceptual differentiation and deferral of meaning in processes of signification difference also refers simultaneously to the entire configuration of its meanings and for for according to anthony giddens Anti-foundationalism or epistemological crisis in postmodernism is dismissed as inoquate, okay, inquiet, okay, if pushed to appear as a theory or a mere description of a normal part of modernity. For, for Giddens, modernity coming to understand itself or fuller understanding of reflexivity inherent in modernity itself. Giddens further claims that Okay. It expresses its, uh, it expresses an awareness which is widespread, I mean anxieties which press in on everyone. Okay. This is very important okay. uh, that epistemological crisis is dismissed. Modernity according to Giddens can thus be described as the greater and greater use of disembedding mechanisms to organize social life. 
However, there is also considerable re-embedding involving the pinning down of disembedding mechanisms to local contexts again. How does it happen? This happens when relations of trust, trust okay, are also formed by face work commitments and face to face commitments um, and as a more generalized trust in abstract system develops even where these involve faceless commitments. Okay. Goffman's work okay, is uh, cited here on the relationships which develop between strangers and how they are managed. Okay. Goffman is a uh, Goffman's method is known as dramaturgical approach. Okay. It is a micro sociological theory, micro sociological approach to understand society. Okay. In our day to day life, okay, even our actions, even our even if we do not speak, okay, still we can relate to each other. Suppose, I am delivering a lecture now and some students, okay, they just lean forward and they nod their head then it reflects even if they do not say anything, but it reflects their uh, seriousness and attentive, attentiveness okay, for guidance uh, sorry not for guidance, but for Goffman, Goffman, Goffman's dramaturgical approach. Guidance also tells us that the personal and impersonal are deeply intertwined in everyday life and relations of trust are always ambivalent. Confidence is required because there is a fundamental ignorance of the social world, but that implies that uh, trust is largely a matter of making pragmatic connections based on past experiences. Okay. However, there is another dimension to it based on a general ontological security, which arises in early childhood as a result of definite child rearing practices and, and uh, some child psychology is summarized such as Erickson. If somebody wants to uh, study on child psychology and so on, uh, child rearing, ontological security and so on, please go through Erickson's writings. Okay, writings. For, for Giddens, traditional and modern cultures can be contrasted in terms of how they create environments of trust and risk. Giddens shows how the traditional social bonds such as kinship community and religion can be seen as devices to organize environments of trust, while the characteristic environments of modernity are seen as personal relationships, abstract systems, future oriented counterfactual thinking and a perception of thre threats not from nature, war or the gods, but from the greater reflexivity of modernity as we are part of it. We are not isolated from this, from our economic culture and polity. That's why there is a greater threat threat from the from the greater reflexivity of modernity, industrialized war, and and personal meaninglessness. I mean, the chance is missed here, perhaps, to sketch the dangers of e excessive reflexivity. Okay, this is very important. Okay, I mean, the way Giddens tried to posit his argument uh, that that traditional and modern cultures can be contrasted in terms of how they create environments of trust and risk. Okay. I mean the characteristic environments of modernity are seen as personal relationships, abstract systems, future oriented counterfactual thinking and, and a perception of threats not from nature or war or the gods supernatural forces, but from the greater reflexivity of modernity, industrialized war, personal meaninglessness and so on. In this context, in this context, according to Giddens, the, the adaptive mechanisms to these perceptions of risk and threat are common to both expert as well as lay people. Expertise rapidly runs into the limits of the predictability of the world and this can produce a pragmatic acceptance and un, an interest in surviving. As last has suggested that, uh, that this can produce some kind of numbness and deep in anxiety within an alternative coping mechanism is sustained optimism based on faith in reason or in God or supernatural either either reasoning capacity or uh, or superstition. 
and the third possibility is cynical pessimism where people cope with risks by using black humor the the uh, celebration of anachronism and so on as a way of coping with pessimism as such and and finally there is the possibility of radical political engagement in various social movements gudin seems to have missed out retreatism and, and innovation of course uh, the development of illegal activity as as in criminal careers uh, he has added sustained optimism and and cynical pessimism and for gudin's trust is extremely important trust is crucial to modern life okay trust is very important to modern life and trust is intertwined with the growth of global ages trust on a more personal level is best seen as a project something to be worked at involving a mutual process of self disclosure gidens focuses on erotic involvement here especially the romantic love com complex now he also takes on lessons gloomier view of an increasing manipulation and powerlessness the result of a growing menacing appearance of the contemporary world this seems reminiscent of bomens insistence that only pure or we relations uh, offer uh, hope in modernity bomen if if somebody wants to read please we can uh, go through bomen's writings okay according to giddens globalization leads to displacement of the old embedding mechanisms and a possible reembedding in a whole dialectic of displacement and reembedding intimacy and and impersonality expertise and reappropriations privatizing and and engagement okay these are the characteristic features of of critical modernist paradigm in sociology for gidens okay i mean globalization leads to displacement of the old embedding mechanisms and a possible reembedding with our economic culture and polity the self active and reflexive self and so on in a whole dialectic of displacement and reembedding intimacy and impersonality expertise and reappropriations privatism and engagement okay referring to habermas we are we are going to uh, discuss uh, eugen habermas a little while later i mean uh, within 5 10 minutes okay referring to habermas what what giddens suggested that expert systems do not colonize life worlds in in habermas's term it is known as um, lebenswelt okay. okay continually reappropriated by lay agents thus expertise continually filters back into the life world certainly a welcome attempt to modernize the concept of the life world in habermas finally for for giddens modernity institutionalizes the world of doubt not certainty okay that's very important i mean the the proponents of theology the proponents of metaphysics they always try to institutionalize certainty okay now we have made a transition from the world of certainty to you know, a world of doubt for similarly for giddens modernity institutionalizes not certainty but doubt we have not developed a new postmodernist phase but rather a complex meaning of presence and absence okay the the, the problem of order uh, the problem of time and space distanciation okay not primarily an expression of cultural fragmentation or of the dissolution of uh, of the subject into a world of science rather the experience of modernity arises from a simultaneous transformation of subjectivity and and global social organization against a troubling backdrop of high consequence risks it's very important to look at the time space distances and i mean when what is what is the relationship between structure and agency we have discussed in the context of marx in the context of weber in the context of Stra levi strauss and althusser in the context of western marxists and so on what is the relationship between structure and agency for giddens therein lies the significance of structure structuration theory he he talks talks about the 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 way he dwells upon 
the relationship between structure and agency I mean structure and agency do not constitute some sort of dualism rather they constitute some sort of duality. Duality of the structure means practices human practices or practices of the agency are both the medium as well as the outcome of, of, of the structure that we have today. I mean thereby he tries to place the, the place agency on a higher pedestal vis a vis structure. Okay? This, is, this is one way to understand, okay? one way of reading structure essentially. But, but, but if you ask Giddens, Giddens is alive even today, I mean he is almost 90, 91 years old. Uh, he was the uh, earlier he was the director of uh, the London School of Economics and Political Science, and a great, great uh, theorist uh, of his generation and the way he tried to work on the contributions of uh, Durkheim, Weber and Marx. I think it is a seminal work in the 1970s when he was barely 30, 32, 33 years old, he wrote capitalism and modern social theory. Okay? I mean comparing the works of um, Durkheim, Weber and Marx. Okay? And it is a seminal work that, uh, that um, I mean uh, it is a widely read cited reference, uh, reference book. Uh, not simply in India or Great Britain, I mean United Kingdom, but across the continents. Okay? You go to any, any library, uh, um, you will find a copy of capitalism and social, uh, modern social theory, any library in the world. Okay? Giddens reflections on modernity, their Giddens reflections on modernity can be examined through his reflections on, uh, on time space distanciation duality of the structure, the problem of order and so on. Okay? If this is so, then now we are going to move on to how to synthesize modernity and social theory by Eugen Habermas. Okay? Eugen Habermas of course, belongs to the tradition of critical theory and pragmatism. Okay? When I say critical theory, I refer to the Frankfurt School, the theorists of Frankfurt School in Germany. They are essentially they are known as neo Marxists. Okay? Habermas also is clubbed under neo Marxist school of school. It is very important, I mean, if somebody may say that what is the what are the differences then again between Marxism and neo Marxism. Okay? Neo Marxists especially try to operate at the level of a critique to positivism, scientism, critique to positivism, a critique to scientism, a critique to economism. That that any argument, any phenomenon cannot be reduced to positivist positivism, cannot be reduced to science, cannot be reduced to only economy. Okay? There cannot be positivistic reductionism, there cannot be scientific scientistic reductionism or there cannot be economic reduction. Okay? That is the critical theory. And when I say pragmatism, I mean uh, an American tradition of, of uh, pragmatism, where, I mean which is based on practical experience of human agency. Okay? And his uh, uh, Habermas is noted for his work on the, the, I mean the structural transformation of the public sphere. Habermas's work focuses on the foundations of social theory and epistemology. Epistemology, you know, I mean body of knowledge or theory of knowledge, the central political philosophical questions which epistemology addresses. Uh, I mean, what is knowledge? How, what counts as knowledge? How is knowledge produced? And so on. And, and Habermas's work focuses on the foundations of social theory and epistemology the analysis of advanced capitalist societies and democracy, okay? the rule of law in a critical social evolutionary context and contemporary politics, particularly German politics. Habermas's theoretical system is devoted to revealing the possibility of rationality, I mean the possibility of reason, emancipation, 
and not simply rationality, but rational critical communication latent in modern institutions and in the human capacity to deliberate and pursue rational interests. Habermas is known for his work on the concept of modernity, particularly with respect to the discussions on rationalization originally set forth by Weber. Whilst influenced by, by American pragmatism, structural functionalism and even post structuralism, I mean post modernism, many of the central tenets of Habermas's thought remain broadly Marxist in nature. Habermas has constructed a comprehensive framework of social theory and philosophy drawing on a number of intellectual uh, traditions, in a number of uh, theoretical traditions. Namely, the German philosophical thought of Immanuel Kant, Schelling, Hegel, Dilthey, Edmund uh, Husserl and uh, Gadam. The Marxian tradition, both the theory of Karl Marx himself as well as the critical neo-Marxian theory of the Frankfurt School that is Max Horkheimer, Theodor Adorno, uh, Herbert Marcuse and so on. The sociological theories of Max Weber, Emil Durkheim and George Herbert Mead, the linguistic philosophy and speech act theories of Wittgenstein, Austin, uh, Stossen, St uh, Tolmin and Serle, the development psychology of Piaget and uh, Kohlberg, the American pragmatist tradition of um, uh, Charles Sanders uh, Peirce and Dewey, the sociological systems theory of Talcott Parsons and Luhmann and Neo-Kantian thought. We have already discussed Neo-Kantianism, Marxism and so on. We have discussed Weber, I mean uh, what is Neo-Kantianism, I mean our knowledge of this social world is a constructed one which involves selection and interpretation. Okay. We have discussed um, most of the things, but I am not going to discuss uh, all these uh, 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 philosophies of Kant or Schelling or Hegel, Delthi, Husserl, Gadamer and so on, because it will take, it is, this, is a, this will be a completely different course altogether. What I am trying to focus on here is that how Habermas considers his major contribution to the to be the development of the concept and theory of communicative reason or communicative rationality, which distinguishes itself from the rationalist tradition by locating rationality in structures of interpersonal linguistic communication rather than in the structure of either the cosmos or the knowing subject. This is very important. And Habermas's social theory advances the goals of human emancipation while maintaining an inclusive universalistic moral framework. And such universalist inclusive universalistic moral framework rests on the argument called universal pragmatics that all speech acts have an inherent telogy. Telogy mean I mean that the, it must have a goal, it must have an end. Okay? I mean the goal of mutual understanding that and that the human beings possess the communicative competence to bring, bring about such understanding. Okay? Habermas built the work of work of framework out of the speech act philosophy of Wittgenstein, Austin and Serle, the sociological theory of the interactional constitution of mind and self of Mead and the theory of moral development of Piaget and Kohlberg and the disclosure ethics of his uh, Heidelberg colleague Appel, Carl Otto Appel. Okay? Okay. I mean to give you, a, give you an example, suppose what did Wittgenstein suggest? What can be said at all, what can be expressed at all can be expressed very clearly and what I cannot talk about I must pass over in silence. Then the significance of, of, of communicative rationality is very important, communicative competence is very important to bring about such, such mutual understanding. Habermas's works resonate within the traditions of Kant, Immanuel Kant and the enlightenment and of democratic socialism through which uh, I mean through his emphasis on the potential for transforming the world and arriving at a more human just and uh, I mean equitable and egalitarian society 
through the realization of the human potential for reason in part through discourse ethics. While Habermas has stated that the enlightenment is an unfinished project, I mean this what is that enlightenment, why is it an unfinished project precisely because the, the enlightenment the way uh, Habermas tried to visualize or foresee okay, it must be uh, the uh, enlightened must be uh, must aim at a more human just equitable and egalitarian society. Okay. While Habermas has stated that that the enlightenment is an unfinished project, he argues that it should be corrected and complemented not discarded. In this he distances himself from the Frankfurt school criticizing it as well as much of postmodernist thought for excessive pessimism, misdirected radicalism and, and, and uh, exaggerations. Okay. This is important and, and within sociology Habermas's contributions, okay, uh, I mean ha Habermas's major contribution was the development of a comprehensive theory of societal evolution and modernization focusing on the difference between communicative rationality and rationalization on the one hand and strategic and instrumental rationality and rationalization on the other. Okay. Instrumental rationality who said? Max Weber. Communicative rationality? Habermas. Okay. Thereby, uh, uh, Habermas tried to look at the distinction between communicative rationality and rationalization on the one hand and strategic or instrumental rationality and rationalization on the other. This includes a critique from a communicative standpoint of the differentiation based theory of social systems developed by Luhmann, a student of Talcott Parsons. His, his Habermas's defense uh, uh, of, of modernity and civil society has been a source of inspiration to, uh, inspiration to others and is considered a major philosophical alternative to the varieties of post structuralism. He has also offered an influential analysis of late capitalism. Habermas, okay, when I say late capitalism, late modernity and so on, it is interesting, I mean to, to see these, these uh, uh, developments. When, when we look at this, okay, Habermas perceives the rationalization, humanization and democratization of society in terms of the institutionalization of the potential for rationality that is inherent in the communicative competence that is unique to the human species. This is very important. What is so unique to human species? I mean the, the perception of, of rationalization, humanization and democratization of society in terms of the institutionalization of potential for rationality. How is it found? How can it be found? It can be found in, in the way in which we try to conceptualize communicative competence for mutual understanding, greater mutual understanding. Habermas contends that communicative competence has developed through the course of evolution, but in contemporary society it is often suppressed or weakened by the way in which major domains of social life such as the market, the state and organizations have been given over to or, or taken over by strategic or instrumental rationality, so that the logic of the system supplants that of the Levenswald or life world. Okay. Therein lies the significance of, I mean when, when, uh, when uh, Habermas tries to deviate from instrumental rationality to communicative rationality and rationalization, okay. therein lies the significance of uh, or therein lies the, the, the beauty of the ways in which he tried to dwell upon science. Okay. For him, it is not simply science, but reconstructive science. Okay. Habermas introduces the term reconstructive science with a double purpose. There is a dual purpose. There are two purposes. Number one, the purpose of reconstructive science is to place general theory of society between philosophy and social sciences, between abstract systems and concrete systems, between general systems and specific systems 
and secondly the purpose of reconstructive science is to reestablish the rift between great theorization and the empirical research. Okay. There must be uh, uh, I mean they must always I mean em, our experiences our theories they must interact with each other there must be a tussle otherwise we, we cannot uh, uh, have new theories. The model of the model of rational reconstructions represents the main thread of the surveys about the structures of the world of life in terms of culture, society and personality and their respective functions I mean in terms of um, um, cultural reproduction, social integrations and socialization. And for this purpose the dialectic between symbolic representation of the structures subordinated to worlds of life I mean internal relationships okay, on the one hand and the material reproduction of the social systems in the, in the complex uh, external relationships between social systems and environment has to be considered. Okay. This is very important when I when, when uh, Habermas was trying to dwell upon rational reconstructions okay, I mean it represents the main thread of the surveys about the structures of the life world structures of the life world on the one hand okay, on the one hand and their respective functions on the other. When I when he referred when he said uh, structures of the world of life or life world he referred to culture society and personality and the functions of those structures of the life world when he said he referred to cultural reproductions social integrations as well as socialization. And when he talked about when Habermas talked about the dialectic between symbolic representation of uh, 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 on the one hand and material reproduction on the other I mean when symbolic representation of the structure subordinated to all worlds of life I mean internal relationships when he referred to uh, material reproduction of the social systems in their complex um, systems. Okay. He referred to the external relationships between social systems and environment okay. and this dialectic between symbolic representation uh, and, and material reproduction of the social systems okay, has to be considered. Okay. This model I mean Habermas's model finds an application above all in the theory of the social evolution uh, uh, starting from uh, starting from uh, the reconstruction of the necessary conditions for a uh, phylogeny of the socio-cultural life forms I mean the hominization until an analysis of the development of social formations which Habermas divides into primitive uh, traditional modern and contemporary formations. Okay. What are the key points okay, that we have got uh, in the context of uh, all three whether it is it was uh, whether it is uh, by Wallerstein or Giddens or, or um, Habermas we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Okay. Now, what we have discussed very quickly okay. we have discussed we have we, I mean in this lecture we have discussed the distinctions between modernity and postmodernity. Okay. The, the contributions made by I mean on the basis of the distinctions between modernity and postmodernism, we have discussed uh, the contributions made by Anthony Giddens and uh, Jürgen Habermas. Anthony Giddens reflections on the problem of order is one of time space distanciation I mean in that time and space uh, are ordered in modernity to connect presence and absence. We have also discussed how these time space dist distanciations or separations produce disembedding uh, of traditional forms of relationships as standard and abstract dimensions of space and time okay, uh, come to order and rationalize activities in the place of local contexts. We have also discussed disembedding and I mean dis, uh, disembedding mechanisms for, uh, for uh, Giddens I mean which require the creation of symbolic tokens. Okay. We have also discussed trust. Uh, uh, which arises 
from the lack of full information uh, which connotes uh, reliability in the face of contingency which operates as a link between faith and confidence which involves principles rather than relying on the morality of others and so on and how we have also discussed how Giddens dismisses anti foundationalism in postmodernism. We have also discussed structuration theory, the, the duality of structure and so on and then we moved on to Habermas, I mean how Habermas was, um, how Habermas belongs to the tradition of critical theory and pragmatism, how he is well known for his work on the structural transformation of the public sphere. Okay what are his intellectual influences namely American pragmatism, structural functionalism and even post structuralism though many of the central tenets of Habermas's thought uh, remain broadly Marxist in nature. Okay? And, and when, when Weber was more concerned about instrumental rationality or strategic rationality uh, uh, or goal oriented social action or intentional human action. Okay? Uh, Habermas was more concerned about communicative rationality and, uh, and rationalization. And when while, while Habermas stated that the enlightenment is an unfinished project, he argues that it should be corrected and complemented not discarded. In this uh, of course, um, Habermas uh, distances, uh, distance, uh, distances, from, uh, distances himself from the Frankfurt School criticizing it as, as well as much of postmodernist thought for excessive pessimism, misdirected radicalism and exaggerations. Okay? In, the, in the next lecture, I, I mean, I mean uh, further, further uh, Habermas also talked about uh, reconstructive science, I mean the purpose of which is to place the general theory of society between philosophy uh, and social sciences and also to uh, re-establish the rift between the great theorization and the empirical research. Okay? And then the way uh, uh, Habermas talked about the model of rational reconstructions which represents the main thread of the surveys about the structures of the world of life on the one hand and the functions of those structures of the world of life on the other. And for this purpose, the dialectic between symbolic re representation of the structures subordinated to all worlds of life on the one hand and, and the material reproduction of the social systems in their complex okay, has to be considered and such model finds an application above all in the theory of the social evolution starting from the reconstruction of the necessary condition for a phylogeny of uh, of the sociocultural life forms, the hominization until an analysis of the development of social formations, which Habermas s subdivides into primitive, traditional, modern, and contemporary formations. Okay. Uh, in the next lecture, we are going to discuss the key points so far as uh, the contributions of Wallerstein, Giddens. Uh, and Habermas are concerned. Thank you.